Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to walk through how to set up continuous integration, commonly referred to as CI in a CI CD pipeline with GitHub Actions. So we can automatically run continuous integration in our GitHub repo. Before we get started, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Supporting me on either Patreon or GitHub sponsors, subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and sharing on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, etc. Starting the repo on GitHub and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. So what exactly is continuous integration, commonly referred to as CI? What it does is it automates the integration of code changes in your GitHub repository or anything that you want to use like Bitbucket or something else. Why is this so powerful? Because if you want to enforce certain linting standards, you want to enforce a certain test pass, you can do this all automatically with continuous integration. And it's not just passing, it's also failing. The continuous integration will automatically fail if the linting checks you put in place aren't passed or the tests that you put in place aren't passed. Imagine that you're the maintainer of an open source GitHub repository and you have many people helping you work on this GitHub repo and they're all making pull requests frequently. You have a few options. One, you can manually review each individual pull request to make sure it doesn't break any existing functionality. You don't have time for this though if you're a one-man job or one-woman job. Instead, you can automate this with continuous integration. So for each pull request, you check whether the linting is passed and whether the test pass automatically. And if they do, you can automatically merge the pull request into the master or main branch. In reality, it's usually a combination of the two. Each pull request must pass continuous integration before it can even be considered. And once it passes all of those, then someone who actually maintains the repository does a final check to make sure it can be merged without any breaking changes. But when you do this final review, you can be assured that it already passed the continuous integration you put in place. And where should you be using continuous integration in your Python projects? In reality, every single one. It enforces consistency across the code base and ensures that functionality isn't being broken that already exists in your code base. It's standard practice in the industry and you should strive to incorporate this in every one of your Python projects. So let's go through a few examples of continuous integration with Python. The most popular ones are linting, Flake 8, which enforces PEP 8, MyPy, which is a type checker in Python. You don't have to include types in Python like you do in C++ or Java, but they are optional. And if you do include them, MyPy will guarantee that those types are correct. iSort, which sorts imports at the top of each file in a pre-sorted format, which helps enforce consistency. Black, which is an uncompromising Python formatter. We're not going to use that in this video series because it's just too uncompromising. And finally, PyTest, which is a testing framework inside of Python that you can incorporate in your projects. In this video alone, we're going to go through the first three, Flakegate, MyPy, and iSort. Later on in this series, we're going to go through PyTest as well. So for the rest of this video, we're going to first fork the repo off of GitHub and run the continuous integration with GitHub Actions on that repo. The repo is going to have Flakegate, MyPy, and iSort errors. We're going to fix all of those and then run our continuous integration with the GitHub action again to see that they all pass. We're also going to see how we can automate commits inside of the GitHub action for iSort in particular. And finally, we're going to do an under the hood walkthrough of the GitHub action that's running the continuous integration in our GitHub repository. All right, let's walk through the code now. Okay, so we're on GitHub to start. Now we're in this repo, program with Alex, test repo pylinter v1. I'll put the link in the description below. You're going to go to this link and you're going to click fork because you have to have this repo forked in your local repository to be able to run the GitHub action on. You can't run this GitHub action unless you have it in your actual GitHub profile. So click fork and while you're there, also please click start. It helps me out a lot. So once you fork it and you have it in your local repository, go there, then click code, copy the URL, open up your terminal and do git clone and paste the URL. Once you have it, cd into the repository, and then you'll have it right here. So once you have that, then open up the code in your favorite code editor. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. So we're going to look at two different files here, the main.py in the top level directory, and the main.yaml in the .github workflows folder. So let's start with main.py. Very simple file, not meant to confuse. Two simple imports, two simple functions, func1, turning the floor of A plus B, and func2, just returning os.get current working directory. 
let's step into the main.yaml file where the meet is happening. This is the file that gets run on every push and pull request as specified right here. This means anytime we make a push or someone else or ourselves make a pull request to the repository, this file gets run. What this file is doing, it's running the continuous integration, the CI workflow. We specify a name, Python lint, not important, pick whatever you want. It runs in Ubuntu latest. If you're familiar with Docker, it's using Ubuntu as the base image. If you're not familiar with Docker, don't worry about it. You can just ignore this, it's not important. Name, we just give it a name, CI workflow. Again, give it whatever you want. The first step, it checks out the code. This actions, checkout, this is actually a GitHub action as well. Publish by GitHub, that just checks out the source code so we can run our additional actions on it. Here's where the magic happens. This linting, this is running the GitHub action PyLinter. This is a self plug because I actually wrote this GitHub action myself as indicated by programming with Alex. What it does is it runs the Flake A, MyPy, and iSort linting automatically on GitHub action for us. And I also gave a few optional flags here as well. So you can specify the Python root. Here's just dot specifying the top level directory. You can specify a subdirectory if you want. Flake eight flags. You can add flake eight flags like max line, line length equals 127. It also gives MyPy flags. You can do something like ignore missing imports. So it's very customizable. I've given you a lot of options as well. And fail and eyesore, false. This means that we have eyesore errors, imports at the top of the, each file aren't sorted in the correct pre-standard order of eyesore. It will not fail this continuous integration. Why don't we want it to fail? Because if we scroll down, we can actually commit the eyesore changes. We run iSort, what it does is it attempts to fix the imports at the top of each file, and then it changes them. So we can commit those changes and then push them all as well, all automatically within the GitHub, GitHub action for us. We don't have to fail because we can push those changes automatically. It saves us a lot of time. But for now, we're gonna change this to true. Because we just wanna see what happens when it does fail and then see the benefit of having that automatic commit and push later. So we have main.py right here. So we have everything running. So we just made this one change to main.yaml. We changed fail and isort to true. So now let's actually run the continuous integration. How do we do that? We're in the repo, you can do a simple git diff. We see we changed this one part. We can do git add star, git commit dash m, change fail on isort to true, and then git push. All right, let's go back to the repo on GitHub. Let's go to the actions tab up at the top. And we see our action actually running right now. We didn't trigger this manually. This is happening automatically for us. We can click into it and we see it running. First it's set up. Up here, it's building the PyLinter GitHub action. Then it checked out the source code, and then it ran the linting. And we see a red X here. This means that it failed. We click into this, and we see what happened. We have flake eight errors. Main.py, main.py, main.py. So what can we do? We can actually fix these errors and recommit. So let's open up the code, we're right here. Let's go back, main.py line four, expected two blank lines, found one. So let's fix that. So, expected an extra line right here. So we'll add an extra line. Go back, line seven, same thing. We already added a line, so now it's line eight. We'll add a line here as well. And finally, line seven, which is now eight, expected missing white space after the comma. It's actually nine now. So right here, we'll add a space. We'll save, we'll go back, clear. Let's do git diff, see our changes. We'll do git add star, git commit dash m, flake eight, and git push. Great, let's go back to the repository, scroll up, click on actions again, and now we see it running again. Click into it, and we see it running. Okay, the action finished. Again, we see a red X in linting. Let's click into it. Now we see different things. We see MyPy errors instead of Flake 8. So we fixed the Flake 8 errors, now we have MyPy errors. 
So let's go to the first one, line six. Incompatible return type value, got int expected string. So let's go to main.py line six. So we see string expected an int. So we can just change this right here. Go back. And line 10, incompatible return value again, got string expected int. Go back. So we change that to string, save. We're back in the terminal, get diff. You see our changes. So we'll do git add star, git commit dash m, mypy, and then git push. Okay, let's go back to the repo, scroll up, actions, and click in. Okay, the action completed. Again, we have red X and linting. I promise this is the final one. We see eyesort errors now. We fixed the flake gate, we fixed the mypy, now we have eyesort errors. So to fix this, we can go in here, let's clear. Very easy to fix eyesort errors. We just do eyesort with the dot for the top level directory, and then it fixed the file. We can do a git diff, and we see it just change up the import order for the eyesort expected order. We do a git add, git commit, and then git push. Okay, go back to the repo, scroll up, actions, click in, and click in. We see that everything passed fine. Great. Like I said before though, we don't have to fail an iSort. If we have iSort errors that need to be fixed, we can commit these automatically within the action and push them automatically as well and not have to fail on them. So let's go back to the code. Let's change this back so we'll get an iSort error. Let's go to main.yaml. Let's change this to false. So this means that if we get iSort errors, we will not fail the continuous integration workflow. We scroll down, what this will do is it will commit those iSword changes that are made automatically. And then here, using someone else's GitHub action called GitHub push action, this will actually push those changes automatically to our repo within the GitHub action. And we're using the secrets.github token. If you want to know what this is, you can go back to the browser right here. This is an automatic authentication that GitHub gives you in every workflow file. This can be used to authenticate yourself when you're running GitHub Actions inside of a workflow file without having to create an authorization token yourself. GitHub provides this for you. I'll put the link for this in the description below if you want to read more about this. So we go back to the code. We have all this set here. We change this to false. And we have the intentional iSort error. So we're up here. We'll do git diff. We see that we change this to false. And see that we introduce an intentional iSort error. So we'll do git add star git commit dash m intentional eyesore error and git push okay back to the code actions and right here so like before when we had the eyesore error and we had fail and eyesore equal to true this github action failed we had a red x on linting here we're not going to get that red x because we're going to automatically commit those changes and push them to the GitHub repo and we set fail and iSort to false. Okay, let's go down. We go to linting. We see we have the same iSort errors that we had before, but we have a checkbox. We didn't fail this time because fail and iSort was set to false. Commit, we committed the changes and push. We push the changes. We can verify this right now. We go to code, we go to main.py, and we see math and OS successfully sorted. And we see the latest change, iSort. This was done automatically inside of the CI workflow file. We go here, we can do a git pull. And we just pulled the iSort changes that were made automatically. Great, so for the final part of this video, let's do a walkthrough of the GitHub action we're using. Just remind ourselves, we're in the main.yaml file. We're using the action called pylinter. Let's go to the browser. Here's the action itself on the GitHub mar Marketplace. I'll put the link for this in the description as well. So we can scroll through and read about what it's actually doing. The three linting packages it's using, Flakegate, MyPy, and iSore, as I've said repeatedly. 
and a few optional inputs for the GitHub action. The Python root, which we went through, the flakeade mypy flags, the fail and isort, which we set to true and false. Skip flakeade if you want to not run flakeade. Skip mypy if you don't want to run mypy. And skip isort if you don't want to run isort. MyPy ignore directories and files. If you want to ignore certain directories or files in your repository, just separate them with spaces. A requirements file. Because Python, if you're running MyPy and you don't have the requirement stubs installed, it will actually fail. So if you want to use requirements like PyYAML, you have to have the types PyYAML installed as well as a requirement stub. So you include those as a separate file, requirements stubs.txt, and specify that as the requirements file argument with just types PyYAML in that requirements stubs.txt file. And then for the outputs, it will output the associated flaky, MyPy, and iSort errors. And down here, if you see a few example workflows, this is the default with no flags. Here's some optional flags as well, with some flake 8 flags, some MyPy flags, fail and isort to true, and some MyPy ignore directories. Here's the auto commit push sort of isort changes, where we set the fail and isort to false, and we have the commit automatically. And finally, we have the license down here. You scroll up to the top again, and you click in right here to the links. You can see all the code here and walk through it if you want. Please consider starting this repo as well if you found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just leave a comment below and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.